Hey everyone, welcome back to The Garage. The Practical Enthusiast YouTube channel just hit a huge milestone. We just got 10,000 subscribers. I'm just humbled, flattered, shocked, and so happy that this little channel has captured that many people's imagination and interest into actually fixing, repairing vehicles of all sorts, including cars and motorcycles. That's just so cool. None of this would have been possible, of course, without all of your support, all of your positive comments that just keep me pushing on and making new videos and fixing new things that I find wrong with either my BMW, my 300ZX, or any of my motorcycles. Now, when this channel started off, it was originally just motorcycle reviews, old used motorcycle reviews. And of course, those will continue, but more recently, it's just been DIY fixes of cars and motorcycles. So as a bit of an underwhelming thank you to all of your support, we're gonna do an additional repair on the E30 behind me. We're gonna fix that fuel level sending unit that I reported in the last video. I ordered a new one and it has finally come. Let's take a look at it. This small little box from FCP Euro houses this a kind of expensive little component that does an awfully simple job of telling you the level of fuel in your tank. So let's just look in here. It's a part that's not even put into its own box. It's just a uh, put in a bag here. So this was $235. Not cheap to say the least. There it is. Pretty special, made by VDO. And for something that just measures fuel, it's an awfully complex looking thing. Now again, my car has two of these sort of things in it. This one goes into the fuel pump side and then there's one on the driver's side of the tank that also measures fuel. And I assume those two send back an average and that's what the gauge reads from. So pretty cool. Now the first thing we gotta do before we can stick this new one in is pull the old one out. Right. So underneath this cover, we have to remove this plate first, so we'll do that. Okay, so now that we're in here, we can see that that's the new fuel pump that I installed just a little while ago. And this is the fuel sending unit that bolts right into the top of the fuel pump. So now we've got to undo this three pin connector comes off pretty easily. Then we have four eight millimeter nuts that need to be undone. Now this fuel sending unit is ready to come up. Now I've got a little catch bucket here just in case there's any fuel that's gonna come up with it. Now you notice this thing doesn't look like the new one. And that's because I've actually gone in and kind of taken this old one apart to see if I could fix it. Well, as you can see, that didn't quite work. Let's get this over onto the bench and see what I'm talking about. All right, with the old one over here on the bench, we can see all the components that make it up. So I've obviously taken this thing apart because I originally tried to get in there and see if I could fix it. And while I may have been able to do that, I ultimately caused a lot of damage because, first of all, to even get inside of this, you have this aluminum sleeve, which is very thin. You have to break these little indentions that kind of affix it to the top of the sending unit here. And of course, once that's done, well, it's pretty well mangled at that point. And let alone getting this back up and re-tightened down, that's your first obstacle, which I wasn't able to get past. And then the second obstacle occurs inside of here. So this is the bottom of the sending unit. It's just screwed onto the bottom of this central shaft and it would go on there like this. So inside of this are two very fine wires that go from the top to the bottom on both of these pins right here. And this float rides down those wires. On either side are these two little fingers that the wire goes between, it threads between these two and an electrical connection is made on both sides. And as this slides up and down, it changes the resistance through the circuit, and that's what tells the fuel gauge what the fuel level is. Now, when I was getting in there, I accidentally broke those two very fine wires, and there's just no way to actually fix that once they're broken. There's no way to re-solder it so that it has that tension along there anymore. So it would just, that this thing would never work right again. So it's not really something that's rebuildable, I would say. I would say if you're very, very 
careful you might be able to take this apart clean up those wires and the contacts within here and probably get this thing to work again but i will say more than likely if you're going to take this thing apart you will accidentally break one of those wires or both of them and then it'll just be all for nothing just a word of caution if you ever want to get into one of these but basically that's how it works you've got this slider here and two very fine wires that it changes the resistance through the circuit and of course just leave it to bmw to over engineer something that's honestly a simple design that many manufacturers have perfected by just having a little float on the end of a long steel piece of wire that changes the resistance and a potentiometer and it's a very simple design but of course bmw has gone out on a limb and <laughs> made something very unique it honestly looks more like a musical instrument than something that would measure a fuel level you know it is ingenious it's it's creative but ultimately it means that it fits this specific vehicle and you have to spend a load of money if you need to go replace it anyway that's the inside of it now we have this new one that we can just slip it back into the same position and hopefully our fuel gauge will work let's get it in now, before we stick this back into the tank, I want to hook the electrical connector up to this, then turn the car's ignition on, and then move the float up and down and make sure the gauge responds to the float level. Okay, so I'm happy with that result. It looks like this is working perfectly and everything else in the electrical system, including the gauge, is working correctly as well. Now, it's important to remember that this only accommodates for about half of the gauge's range because there are two fuel level sending units on this gas tank for this particular E30. It's very much model year dependent. Some only have a single one. Some do have this two level sender setup. It just depends. So before you go out and spend money on two of them, make sure your car actually has two of them. Let's get this thing actually bolted up to the tank. Okay, with the new sending unit installed, let's see what our fuel level is. And according to the fuel gauge, we have just over half a tank. Now, I would believe that reading because it does have 114 miles on this fuel tank. But since we have a second fuel level sending unit to make sure both of them are working, I'm going to go take this car, fill it up with gasoline and see if we have a full fuel reading on the gas gauge. If not, then we know that our second fuel level sensor is probably on its way out as well. Hopefully that's not the case because that one is like almost $400. So let's take this car out, put some gas in it and check the reading. of truth look at that it's reading full that's what I call a success so glad that I don't actually have to replace that other fuel sending unit because that would have been way way too expensive all right, so that's a success. That's pretty much all we were gonna do for this video, but thanks again for supporting the channel. I never could have made it to this point without all of your positivity and support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you guys again soon.